Yeah, and we are live. So uh, welcome, everybody. Nash and Atish Show. Uh, this is episode six. Uh, you're here with Casey. I'm Milo. What's up, Top G? How you been? Been good. How are you? Good. So I got all my stuff moved, finally. And so I got all my books and all my, my stuff's back in order. But uh, yeah, you got you got a different background. I, well, yeah, all my yeah, so all my stuff's kind of jammed in here, which is fine. But I'm I'm missing some stuff. So let me ask you real quick. Um, so I'm missing my pendulum. I can't find it. I have my board. Um, mm -hmm. you told me where to buy the last one, and I forget where I bought it. Is there? And I was just going to ask: Is there any kind of significance in the size or the weight of the pendulum, or you think it's just like the overall <clears throat> just the action of it? uh the action most likely you can get any type of size and where you got it last time was etsy i told you to get it on etsy etsy has a lot of good stuff for occult stores and things like that so yeah that they do that they do get whatever you're drawn to it's my advice yeah i was just gonna hang a washer on a string and do it i think you get the same effect. i mean that would work it would work it just is not uh <laughs> it's not as cool right you know right. so yeah anyway yeah so i'll buy another one and we should do an episode on that eventually yeah yeah you still use yours quite a bit or just here and there uh here and there not as yeah. much i prefer uh tarot cards yeah there you go for divination yeah. yep so, yeah, so slowly, uh, like, pulling my altar stuff back out. It's still not <clears throat> what it was in the desert, but it's, <clears throat> forgive me, I got a little, I got a little cold or something. You got, you got a cold? Yeah, a little something, a little scratchy. Just kind of forgive me if I'm coughing. But, yeah, so just kind of putting all that together again and getting all that situated. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What's new? Uh, nothing much. Ordered some books. Caught books. Grimoires. But uh, it's about it. Just working. Yep. New info. New episodes. I like it. So episode sure. episode six, special number six. What do you uh, What do you want to dive into for this one? What do you want to talk about? Uh you talked about putting up your altar and stuff so yeah i think we've been talking a little bit well quite a bit uh about asmodeus on occasion yeah. and i think <clears throat> with episode six it seems appropriate fitting fitting for episode six talk about oh asmo day yeah <clears throat> well let me i guess let me back up so we we talked about this briefly before and it was pretty much you were like, hey, dad, you know, I know you're working sigil magic and I know you're doing chaos magic and, and those things are working for you and and all this. But like you you have all of the, you know, you have all the, uh, you know, material and the books and grimoires and stuff to like take it a step That's further, true. you know, and, and you were already doing all this stuff. And so... <clears throat> And again, apologies for uh, bringing this up because we've talked about it briefly before, but it was pretty much like you had suggested me, uh, you know, working with Asmodeus because you felt like our personalities were quite, you know, alike. And um, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I, I, I kind of kind of did what you did. I, I was kind of studying the sigil. And uh, he, he's got that one with the, in the complete book of demonology, it's a, it's a different one that uh, the author uses. But then like in the, in the, the lesser key of Solomon, I believe it's the one with like the tail. It's like a tail yeah. coming out of it, which is really, it's really epic for the tail. So I, yeah. I kind of fell in love with that. And then, you know, reading about him and all the different things, there's also like a really unique tie back to Freemasonry to where, and and I don't want to get off on this one too too much because I already spent a whole episode on it. But you know, in in in, uh, in you know Freemasonry, it's all about hey, how did they build this fantastic temple? They don't talk about this in Freemasonry. But if you do look up Asmodeus, King Solomon had a ring, and then the ring he could control Asmodeus 
you know, I don't know. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And then Asmodeus was trapped in like this container. And then, you know, King Solomon made him build the temple. And so there's a, there's a tie that I had with him anyway. Um, yeah. And so <clears throat> basically, you know, I bought the complete book of demonology, which is great. And uh, was learning that the ends, the E and N, like the chant of the, of the yeah. fallen angel. Or, and so I kind of learned that. And then you had said, you know, you, you got to say it. I forget how many times, but if you really want to reach out to, you know, you, you really got to repeat the end quite a bit. And so I found the same exact end uh, on YouTube. And I just, yeah. I just put it on repeat. And then I slowly just started building this little, um, this little tiny, just shrine kind of for him. And then it, you know, it started off little with like, um, there's obviously his, you know, his sigil with the tail, you know, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, I started reading about how he liked sweet wine. Uh, he liked black and red candles. He loved um, like dragon's blood incense worked really well. And so mm -hmm. day by day, I would just piece together a new thing just you know and honoring him and <clears throat> i would meditate on him with some intention and things like that and then ultimately i i just got talking i i literally would just like be in the shower or my car and we, we him and i would just speak uh he's not necessarily speaking back but it, it would give me right. it would give me like you know when you hear a good song and you, you get like goosebumps it's called Frizzon, mm -hmm. F-R-I-S-S-O-N. That feeling, and I always got that with him. And then um, <clears throat> what had happened, which is the, the crazy part of the whole thing, if you remember, mm -hmm. was I, I moved to the desert, and then I made another move in the desert. And that second move, I literally, like, started losing everything so ironically enough like my wife leaves uh mm -hmm. we get divorced okay and then you know I, I have these joint ventures i'm doing like i met this person and we were gonna like rehab homes in the first home we were gonna rehab and fix up you know we were gonna split 50k you remember all this right so there's like things mm -hmm. happening yeah. and then that just went away like she just called and said, yeah, you know, my, uh, something about my aunt or something was gone. And then all my friends I had down there, I just couldn't like reach them. No one's calling me. No one's talking to me. And then, uh, and then I lost my job, you know, which was nuts for me to, to, yeah. to lose a job. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, with your resume, with your resume, it was crazy. I mean, you know, I'm a workaholic. And so it was really, really, it was really crazy. And so my first thought was, well, this, you know, I'm going back to the satanic panic in the 80s. And I'm thinking, man, this guy's, you know, this is ruining my life. It's the only thing I could tie together is that, you know, I'm reaching out to As As Asmodee and then all these bad things are happening. But they're not necessarily bad. So what what I had to understand was, you know, I forget if you told me or you read this maybe somewhere I read, I don't remember, but it was something about, you know, Asmodeus can make you invisible. And it, and it doesn't mean you get to be invisible and like go walk around in like the girl's locker room, right? Like is it, that's not <laughs> yeah. what, that's not what the invisibility thing is. It, it literally means you don't exist. And everything around you is, is, is gone. And yeah. <clears throat> it was definitely a huge ego reset for me. And it was definitely a um, huge wake-up call for me. And um, what really iced the cake, I, I think I, I don't have the pictures anymore. I wish I would have saved them. I woke up one morning, dreamt of him. And he was this mm -hmm. huge, he was a huge bird. 
he expanded like so many. He was so large as a bird is how he came to me in a dream. Yeah. And um, he was just saying, yeah, you know, you're I'm, I'm, re I'm resetting your ego. It's what you need, you know. And I was like, OK, you know, whatever. And um, oddly enough, I, I woke up the next day and that's when there were spots all over my room. Do you remember this? Yeah, you, you, yeah you FaceTimed me. You FaceTimed me and showed me. I, fr I was freaking out, wasn't I? Yeah, I FaceTimed you. You, look, you, look, you looked like a crazy person. I don't mean to interrupt, but, you know, what the audience doesn't understand is that all of this happened, like, you know, your wife leaving you and all these things just disappearing and getting fired with, over the span of literally two weeks. It was just every day there was something new. I remember you texting me like every day, yo, we got a FaceTime. Something else happened, you know, and it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was, it was nuts. And so I'm looking around my room and that's where I had my altar. My altar was booming at the time, right? I had that big triangle and I had, stickers and I wrote out the N and I had his sigils and I mean I had him going he's got a great altar well, I got and I, you know apologies to him I have to rebuild that here but anyway uh, yeah so literally um, there's spots on every wall on every picture on everything he, he tattooed the entire room with, with spots and what it would look like, it would look like um, you were running in there with a glass of water and had fallen and then, you know, <clears throat> water hits. But then you can't, I couldn't wipe it off. Like it wasn't great. Remember me touching it? Like, bro, look at this. What is this? Right? Yeah. It's not yeah. rubbing off. It's probably still there today. <laughs> it's probably still there today. But um, absolutely crazy, crazy mm -hmm. when that, when that happened, because he, I was flying with him in the dream as this huge bird, and then boom, I wake up and I'm like, "What?" It had a different feeling in the place. Everything was different. Anyways, yeah. and that's when I noticed my. So that room had a sliding um, door, glass door that went to the outside, and it had these little uh, white lines uh, that just went up and down. And there was just thousands of them, thousands of them. It, it looked like that. Uh, it looked like that. Uh, what do you call the the one zero one one zero one one zero one one? It's like computer code or whatever. It was, yeah. Yeah. It, it was nuts, man. And <clears throat> that would wipe off. And I didn't know what it was. I smelled it and it didn't smell like anything. And I, I didn't taste it. I probably should have. As weird as, as, weird as that sounds. Yeah. But so that that was like the first time spiritually that I had seen anything physically happen like to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and so you know it's growing up as a kid, you know you're praying to God and you're doing this and you're doing that, but really nothing manifests from that. For for me it didn't. For other people sure may may have but this is what manifested for me. And it definitely was real. And I definitely remember calling you all the time being like, you're not going to believe this. This is nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. And, you know, the more I looked into yeah. it, it was more like um, there's a lot of people who say, hey, it's going to sound like your life's being destroyed. But what he's doing is he's he's seeing your life and he's saying, Okay, no, we're we're going to erase all this, and then, and then I'm going to put you on this path here. And so <clears throat> now I just feel like this is where I'm. This is where it took me. This new place, this new job, new new people, new new things, and I just I feel like that's where he wants me to be. And so I just now allow, yeah. I just kind of allow it I don't, I don't, for a minute there. I, I was showing a little resistance, right? Yeah. You, <clears throat> yeah. you know, but yeah, mm -hmm. but ultimately, um, really, really eye opening, really crazy. And again, and again, the goosebumps I get just all the time, you know? Yeah. 
So pretty wild, uh, pretty wild tournament. That's why we kept. That's why earlier in the earlier episodes we would talk about Asmodeus, and I'd say, hey, "Man, it, you know, we need a whole episode on it because I'm just going to go off about yeah. how how nuts Asmode is and how great, yeah. you know, his presence can yeah. be." For sure, I think to clarify uh, with the audience, um, the complete book of Demonotry, which I will link in the description, is a book by S. Connolly. And demonolatry, spelled with an L, A T R Y, I believe, and it's basically the worship of demons is kind of what it means. And it's it was fundamental for me and you. Oh, you might be grabbing it. I think. Yeah, you're grabbing it. He's grabbing it. He's got it. Sorry, you got it. Yeah, and then my stuff's all here now. So this is the right. book. <clears throat> this is the book Miles referring to. This is an excellent, yep. excellent book full of lots of detail. Very good book. Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about uh, ends, E N N S, uh, demonic ends, um, I might be misquoting, but it's a relatively <clears throat> modern. Uh, invention and nobody kind of knows where they came from but it's kind of viewed as like a calling card for a demon or daemon so just some clarification on that i but you I, well, I, i'm so sorry i had memorized his <clears throat> end and i was i was saying it all the time yeah and for me it was almost like before and after like communication or approval or just something. But then, <clears throat> but the night before he tattooed my room, I had found the end on YouTube and it was just mm -hmm. a black screen mm -hmm. showed his sigil with the tail. And literally mm -hmm. it played the end in this like really dark, like I are of Oz. It was great deep like yeah. crazy voice and that played for like it played like an hour and of course i repeated it and i fell asleep with it and i woke up to yeah. i woke up to what i woke up to so <laughs> definitely uh, so deep definitely real so do you think he has uh <clears throat> kind of your best interest in mind you know at first i didn't at first i didn't right because i didn't i was like why I, i'm losing everything you know like when i lost my job <clears throat> those are my only friends really that i worked like with or i had vendors or whatever yeah and every one of them fell off wouldn't answer me wouldn't answer texts wouldn't you know and i'm like what in the world like is going on so like i lose my family i lose my job i don't have friends every joint venture i wanted didn't happen and no one looked, no one saw me. It was the craziest thing. I, I could walk in the grocery store and say hello, and people would just walk right by me. Like I was invisible. It was nuts. But but now, uh, you know, having the ego reset a little bit is probably what I needed. You know? Yeah. Because if you remember, it was all, you know, it was all the Will Ferrell skit, right? I drive a Dodge Stratus. I'm a divisional manager. It's big time stuff. I'm no, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta link that uh, video for the audience as well. No, that's the funniest thing ever. Yeah, I have a covered parking spot. I have I'm a big time stuff. <laughs> your big time stuff. Yeah, no, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. You don't talk to me like that. And so I, yeah. I think, I think I needed a. <clears throat> you and I joke about it now, but like. I think I needed a big ego reset right then. And, and obviously it, it like worked. So I remember, I remember FaceTiming you like, bro, I dude, like I have just lost like everything. And now my room is like tattooed. <laughs> what Yeah. on earth yeah. have you, let me ask you about the tattooing of the room. Have you ever heard or seen anything like that? No, it was, it was weird when you showed me on FaceTime. And it, it's, I can't really describe it. It was like perfect circular rings yeah. all, all over the wall. And you're like wiping it. And they're like 
super noticeable and they're scattered all over the wall. All over. And I remember you I remember you turning the camera around and I saw your face and I saw your hair specifically and you <laughs> looked like a crazy person. Yeah. But I was seeing it too. Yeah. You were going you were losing your mind. I, I kind of felt bad because I'm the one that was like, Yeah, you should reach out to Asmodeus and you just yeah. started losing everything. Yeah, dude, I lost I lost everything. Yeah, he took everything every, away. <laughs> every time you lost something. I remember you FaceTimed me and you were like, I'm going to buy more stuff for his altar every single time I lose something. And now you have this grand altar. It's the craziest thing. Well, well, I mean, for me, it's like, well, I'm not going to, I can't give up on the thing now. I'm already, I'm already in. You're already in. Yeah. You know, I'm already three feet buried. So I might as well, I mean, if the dudes, if it's going to kill me, then let's do it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all the way in. I'll have a story to tell. Right. Right. So, Let's say somebody's watching this, right? And they want to get into demonolatry or if they want to reach out to Asmodeus. How would you tell them to go about that? I would I would probably recommend them using a lesser demon or fallen angel right out right out the, the gate there. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, reaching right out to the prince of hell there is uh, you know, he's big time stuff. So like I don't know. I think I think isn't he labeled the king? Oh, well. Yeah, they all got the, titles. The, the, yeah, they, he's he's got so many legions and so many stuff. I don't know. Uh, he's just a he's just a bad dude. He's just a bad dude. And uh, I I would I guess I would say this: if if you are in and you are like doing it, uh, don't stop at the first like bad sign of something. You know. Yeah. You know, you're an MMA fighter. You take a loss, you just quit. No, yeah, you keep going. You know, you keep going. The greatest fighters are, you know, they have 40 wins and eight losses, right? Like you're, you're going to have to take some hits here because it's not, yeah. they're not, they're not messing around. And so what, <clears throat> I guess what I got out of it was not to give up on it and not to like be frightened by it, even though it's like really, really scary when you wake up and your room is like tattooed the whole time ceiling bottom floor everything everything your pictures your tv <laughs> you know everything I mean, everything yeah, yeah. He, he was letting me know he was there he's letting me know he's around i already knew it because i felt it i felt like i felt it but you know one of the craziest things that's ever happened uh easily easily uh you know what else happened during that time is i was put on third shift because they were having some problems on third. And I went to third shift. Do you remember this? I was on third for like, I don't know, like 90 days, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is this this also happened during like the Asmodeus uh, yep. month. Uh you would walk up stairs to an office. Next to the office was a conference room. In the corner of that conference room, there was monitors that we had cameras in certain places that you could you could look. Mm -hmm. out at, at you know what's going on out there and so in the middle of the night you know i don't want people there's windows so if you're on the floor you can look up and, and see if i'm looking at you know monitors and stuff so i would always turn the lights off and kind of get in there and watch the monitors if i thought something was you know going on or whatever and i remember uh like 4 30 in the morning i turn around and there's a person sitting there and it's in the dark. And I remember going, huh? Like, what? What? So yeah. I, I, I go turn a light on and I don't recognize who this is. And, and I've got a really strange feeling. And I ask her, she's this tiny little girl with blonde hair. And I ask her what her name is. And she says, oh, I'm, my name's Hades. And I laughed and I said, oh, like the Greek God of the underworld. Your parents named you that. That's amazing that I, I've never heard of that. So if you remember, she had a pendant of St. Anthony on a paper clip and the paper clip. You remember me telling you this? The paper clip was stuck right here in this little skin right here. She'd attached it to herself and she was like dangling it. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, 
I've, this is, I've lost it. Like I, I gotta go to a mental ward. Like this is nuts. Yeah. She, re- she removes it and hands it to me and says, I need you to have this. And I said, okay, I still have it. Uh, I just moved. So I don't know where it is, but I have it. And uh, I'll, I'll find it and I'll, I'll show the people. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll put, we'll put a link with a picture of me. Uh, and, and then, uh, so like um, I, I asked her, I said, well, you need to sign in. I want you to sign in to, to mm-hmm. work, you know? Yeah. And I'm really interested in her signature and she signs it, Alex Frazier. And I said, nice to meet you, Alex. I said, I thought your name was Hades. And she looks me dead in the eye, bro. And she says, oh, my name changes all the time. And I said, oh, okay. I said, I don't think you're supposed to be here. Like it's if you're a new hire or whatever, like it's four in the morning, we don't start this stuff up to like eight. I'm on third. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on with the hiring process right now. I said, so I, I think you should just kind of leave. And she says, okay, I, I can leave. And I walk her down the, the steps and she leaves. And so I'm walking up the steps and I, I have this eerie feeling that I have to watch her leave like the premises. Right. So I, I bolt back down and I open the door and she shouldn't be more than like 12 feet away from me. And she's gone, bro, gone. And so yeah. <clears throat> I go back up and I'm starting to look at the camera footage and she literally like doesn't come on the plant. She just like on the cameras, she just appears at the door, walks up, finds me, hands me the pendant. And then leaves and kind of just vanishes. Yeah. I shut everything down and grab all my people and we're outside, like looking for this girl. Can't find her. Gone. Gone. Still have the pendant. And that was also during that Amos, uh, uh, sorry, the asthma day, what, like three, four week thing I went through. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. When you FaceTime me about that, like, what people don't, don't understand is like where your room was, where you walked security, like it is so like far into the building that like she had to walk through, go up the stairs, go through rooms and go in there. And the thing was, is when you walked in there and the lights are off and you're on the camera, she like walked in there and waited for you to turn around. She didn't say, Hey, am I lost? Am I, I'm here for the new process. Like she just stood and like watched you. Dude, she, when I did the camera footage and I started looking at the times, she literally sat down and stared at me, not saying a word for about six and a half minutes. That's creepy. Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps that it's really creepy. Story. It's the craziest story of all time. Now, is this, is this an asthma thing? It was during the Asmodeus peak there where everything was going haywire and everything was going nuts and um, this person, no idea, Alex Frazier, small little thing, blonde hair, came in to find me and gave me this pendant that was attached to her hand. Come yeah, didn't on. you say that there was like like marks of like blood there? Her, so the 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 pendant didn't have it, but right. when she handed it to me and I saw her hand, she had like all these little bruises and holes and stuff where you could tell she was like removing it and putting it on and then like trying to talk to the locals like does anyone know this girl does anyone know this and it was just always like ah you know the crackheads are just walking around town you know you just you have to get them out of there and everybody just kind of blew it off but i didn't blow it off i was like man you don't understand everything i'm going through right now this is nuts and it, 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 it kind of fit right into everything going on with me Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, it all happened, which is really crazy. And 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 yeah. that's you know that's why you and I are doing the podcast because it's real. This this stuff is like happening, you know. It's it's, yeah. ap- it's happening. You can't deny it. And you know, I wish I would have took more film and I wish I would have took more pictures. But I'm, I did. I am glad I Facetime you to show you because I remember you going, "Hey man, I don't, I don't know." Uh, 
you you may want to like back out or slow down or like this, this is like some uncharted water here you know yeah it's super cool super cool yeah. because it's it's tangible and it, it it's it's real like yeah. it, it happened mm -hmm. top g we the time thing just kicked we are running out of time is there anything that you want me to summarize with it or do you have anything to end on it um i guess you know what's your future plans with asmodeus or you plan on reaching out to any other demon? yeah what is, what is uh you know your thought or <clears throat> any of the viewers thoughts on like does is he does he get disrespected if i start working with another entity a fallen angel or an angel just like we covered you know we I, don't, I don't i don't think so i think like in the complete book of demonology it talks about matron and patron deities or da daemons demons and i mean he's not well he, he potentially could be but i don't know if he's like your quote unquote patron but i don't think you would get necessarily jealous but that's obviously between you and him but i think he pushed you on this path to pursue it further i don't think he'd you know go crazy if you reached out to somebody else well i mean yeah i hear you i guess um i guess as long as i have my my thanks to him and my my recognition, whether it's an altar or it's you wearing a shirt or you got a sigil up somewhere or something like that, as long as you're showing recognition, I don't think he would be upset with any of that. <clears throat> and, and yeah, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of talk about like, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, trying to think of some like clonic, I guess, works pretty well with people right away. Um, there's uh, there's a couple more that. Uh, I'd, I'd have to I'd have to go back through my things and, and look, but there's there's some like there's some guys that'll work with you right away. King Pyman. Pyman, uh, didn't you didn't you need some help with Boone? Boone helped you there for a minute. King Boone, Boone. helped Duke you. Duke Boone. Duke. Duke Boone. Uh, apologies, Duke Boone. Apologies. Duke yeah. Boone. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So so you know as long as your relationship with Lilith is still strong and you're still working with Duke and you're working with these, you know, King Pyman and some of this stuff, well, you know, why not? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I don't know how many people are reaching out to him for help, but I'll tell you, it's they'll, they'll, uh, they'll help you. They'll level you. One, one of the, one of the <laughs> they're going to do, they're going to do something to you. They're gonna bring. They're gonna, they're gonna either bring wealth or gnashing of teeth. You know. <laughs> I remember I asked you. I said, "Do you think I should back out of this or not?" And you, you kind of said, "Well, as long as nothing's like burning." <laughs> See, there's no, there's no gnashing of teeth and weeping of tears yet. So, yes, I mean, there's no weeping and gnashing of teeth yet. So I think you're in good shape. And I said, "Yeah, you're right. The only way out is through. The only way out is through." Yep. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, gnashing of Teeth. Um, hit us up at Gnashing of Teeth Podcast at Gmail. Um, obviously, another touchy one. You know, Mile and I are going to get into the touchy ones. And um, anyone's opinion on the tattooed room or even, you know, Alex Fraser visiting me with the pendant and different things like that that happened to me. Uh, anybody's <clears throat> experience or opinion would love to know. Love to hear it. Um, definitely, uh, definitely happened to me and, uh, was, was forever life changing. So we'll do this Milo. I'm going to end it with you and then we'll cut out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Episode six. It was a good one. I uh, love talking about Asmodeus and your experiences. I think it was a pretty good topic and I'd love to hear what people have to say. Yeah, me too. So. All right. Let's uh let's let's bust out and then uh let's uh we'll start preparing for seven and go from there. All right, everybody. Have a good night.